now let's create the textures for this. Textures are going to be quite straightforward. Um, I'm going to first of all drag out, uh, well before I do that actually, I better set up my lighting. So just shift click that one, shift left click that, that layer there, so that we can see our camera and lamp that we um, moved earlier on. Change that camera type from point lamp to sun lamp. And I'm just going to go ahead and also use the real world settings metric. I don't know if that plays an effect, but uh, I will have to adjust this uh, plan towards the real world towards the real world settings later. And for the sun size, I want to use one centimeter. It's just much better to work with real uh, metrics rather than relying on Blender's uh, sort of made up metrics. So it helps. Um, press use nodes and we'll create a slightly yellowy color too in the sun, and have a strength of about five. Okay, um, and let's just move this out over here, move this uh, in here, control B, and what this will do is it will only render this part when I now change to rendered mode. So we can see our plant uh, being rendered there. I want just going to change the samples to 10, I don't want 32, that's just going to take a little bit too long. So where we can see sampling, just change it to 10. For the final render, I might just may as well, may as well make it 10 as well, should be quick to render. Um, all right, and this one I want to change to the node editor. Okay, and let's just select the leaf by clicking on that one, and we can just make sure that our materials apply. Let's name that material uh, plant leaf, something like that. Um, and uh, we're just going to do the same thing like we've done in previous videos. We're just going to add the main shaders needed uh, to make this leaf look like a leaf. So we need a diffuse, we need a glossy and we need a translucent. All right, uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a mix shader to mix them all together. So one there, one there, it's the same thing again and again. Add the glossy here, add the translucency there, um, and what do we need to do now? We don't want the gloss to apply all over our leaves, we only want it to apply in parts. Uh, if you had a specularity map, that'll be a lot more realistic but I'm going to fake it by using a hue saturation uh, node, which uh, will look a little bit like, let me just bring an emission shader just to preview what our material will look like. So if you look at that now, uh, it'll look like that. So just nothing, it'll just look like your original color, but with all the saturation removed, we can sort of fake a um, glossy map just like that. So I'm going to connect that uh, specularity map to this so that our uh, render will look, so that our specularity map will look like this. So before, the specularity is everywhere. After, the specularity is only in certain parts. And um, we'll use point 0.3, we don't want to be too, too specular. So that seems about okay. And we don't have that much glossy, so about point 0.2 is, uh, is good for this case. Okay, so I'm just going to move that emission node, leave it there for now. For the translucency, um, same thing, I'm going to use another hue saturation value um, node and connect that to that. And let's just quickly see what that looks like. So uh, select those two and press F, select those two and press F, oops, wrong node. So it looks like that, the normal color. Uh, but I want it to look a little bit slightly in the yellowish side and brightness a little bit more. Um, yeah. That seems about right. And then use that to control the translucency of our uh, of our material. So it looks like, so now we can see a bit of light passing through it, but we don't want 50% uh, of the light passing through our, um, well actually that looks pretty good. It actually looks pretty good, but I feel like there's too much light passing through it. So I don't want that, I might just make it 0.3. That'll sort of make it appear thicker. It'll make the leaves look a little bit thicker than it is. So something like that is okay. Or I might just go 0.4. Just a more or less. Makes the leaves look a little bit thin. So 0.3 seems good and um, I'll stick with that. Okay, so that's now set up. One more thing we need to do is we need to add bump to our leaves. Just, just for that little bit more realism. So just all you need to do is add a vector mapping node. Sorry, not a vector mapping. 
shift a vector bump node i'm sorry i'm just going to box select all of this and just move it to the left a bit so to the right a bit um, and then just use the hue saturation value that we created to get rid of all the colors and use that to control the height and just plug the normal into every normal node of the main shaders just like that and we can see the bumping is a little bit too extreme so turn down the strength one is way too much usually 0.2 seems to be about good so if I just have a, a close-up look at that uh, yeah that seems to be good it seems to be bumping out I want to bump inwards I need to click invert and that might do the trick so if I go one we can see that effect a lot so it's going inwards that's exactly what we want 0.2 is about is just a bit more subtle with it might just make it 0.3 yeah and that looks good so one thing about this that looks a little bit unrealistic is um, all the leaves are the same color the exact same color uh, if you look at our image you'll notice that there's some randomness in our uh, you know in our texture we have some bits of yellow and bits of green so we'll ne we need to try to uh, sort of add that randomness into our leaves as well to do so all we have to do is go shift a input and, and add an object info node and we want to use the, uh, the random value mostly to control the randomness of our leaf color and what i want to do now is i want to add shift a um, and color uh, mix rgb or actually um what i might do actually i might use a color hue saturation and uh connect the randomness to that color oh sorry and i want the randomness to affect the hue because for example if i now connect the color to this color of the original image and then use uh, this to control everything else so that that and that so now everything's coming off this um, if I change the hue over here to 0.4 we start to get that yellow look that we want and uh, so what I want or oh, oh, that zero will give it, give it a purple color which is not realistic unless you want to go for more alien territory so what we want to do is we want to have a randomness between 0.4 and 0.5 now this random will select any number between 0 and 1 so if I go like that we get a very rainbowy color it's selecting any value between 0 and 1 and making the hue that value but we only want our hue to be between 0.4 and 0.5 not between 0 and 1 so we can control that by using a converter math node and multiplying that value so if I now multiply by 0.5 just imagine 0 and 1 multiply by 0.5 we'll get a minimum of 0 times 0.5 which is 0 and a maximum of 1 times 0.5 which is 0.5 so now the hue is limited from a range of 0 and 0.5 but we want to make it a bit lower so between 0.4 and 0.5 we have a difference of 0.1 so it's just very very subtle so that's great it's now between 0 and 0.1 but we now want to shift it over about 0.4 places to, to make it 0.4 and 0.5 because right now it's just using between 0 and 0.1 i hope this is making sense it's sounding rather technical but anyways so let's shift a converter math again and we want to add now uh well that's exactly what we want to do so from 0 and 0.1 we want to add so it's between 0.5 and 0.6 but I think for my case I wanted to go 0.4 so that we get that 0.4 and 0.5 so that's about the type of color I want to go mm, we, it seems like we're getting pretty good variation with point now I'll stick it to 0.1 let's make it very very subtle so that's um, that's how you add randomness to your uh, models so it's looking good um, I quite like that look First of all, we need to get rid of the emitter. We don't want to render the emitter. So um, select the leaf emitter and under particle settings, uh, you, under render, uh, uncheck emitter so that this won't render. For diffuse, just pump up the roughness. So let me just uh, go back to rendered mode again. Pump up the roughness to about that much. So it's not very clear, but you can see there's a the little fuzziness there it indicates uh, that that sort of uh, dusty type of look so uh, it's very very subtle but uh, it helps the render next what we want to do is we, if you look closely at the edges of the leaf you notice that it's brighter than in the middle every edge is like that so we can simulate that as well in uh, blender so the node that we're going to use this time is shift a input geometry and it's the pointiness that's going to control it so if i add back in the emission shader again emission and then add the pointiness attribute 
to the color and then show that in our output we have something like this so let me just add a color ramp by pressing shift a converter color ramp and to show you where the pointiness is so if i just bring this up here bring this up here or bring, maybe bring this down a bit uh, and get this a little bit closer there you can see uh, along the edges so we've just now controlled uh, where the edges of our plant is so we can use this as a map to uh, pretty much paint where we want our um, brighter areas to be so that's what the pointiness attribute is it allows you to point out where the edges of your model is so it's useful for a lot of things and this is one of them uh, so we want to combine the color from this so color mix rgb with this and this and make this a factor so it's mixing white with our texture which we don't want we want to mix the white we want to mix the texture but have the white along the edges um, so for this case i want to make it so that um, we use the original texture the original um, color over here so let me just have a so let me i've just plugged it into the mission there uh, we want to make this a lot brighter so maybe add a probably a yet another hue saturation value and just turn up the value quite a bit maybe uh, two uh, maybe turn down the saturation just point two points down and then use that to connect to this color and then see how that looks and that looks pretty good it blends in quite nicely uh, let's just uh, show a bit more of the edges oh sorry oh. why can't I uh, drag this out oh there we go so let's just see a bit more of the edges just like that and that looks good so we'll use this color now to control uh, the entire texture so we don't want to we don't want to go from there now we want to use this one instead so connect that there connect this one there and connect this one there so if I now well I can get rid of the emission now if I now look at the whole texture we get something like that so let's give this a render and see how that looks I really really hate the texture of this it looks like some type of cloth I've, I've resorted to grass blade yet again uh, you can see that over here so grass blade like that I'm just going to rotate it on the 90 degrees R uh, X then I'm going to R Y oh, R oh, sorry R X so, sorry S X I went, I went S Y and then S X now okay let's try something like that see how that looks all right that looks much better quite happy with that one actually uh, and just for the lines for the bump i might use a uh, use the original map so node editor uh where's the bump oh yep yeah, for that bump i might actually uh, use another one so maybe just duplicate that image texture shift d and we'll go back to that other image green leaf pattern and add another hue saturation value and convert it to black and white so no saturation there at all and use that to control the height so if i look at that rendered uh we'll probably, and uh you can see the lines are going in the wrong direction it's going horizontally across and i might just fake this very quickly in input texture coordinate uh uv is what we want to use and then converter mapping or oh, sorry vector mapping just connect the uv to that and the vector to that one and then we'll just rotate the uh, we'll rotate one of these to 90 degrees and see how, how that looks oh there we go we are do getting some overlapping but since it's going to be shown from a distance i'm not going to worry too much about that so at this point i'm quite happy with how this looks just a few things to note just in case you don't know if you want to make like control how high it's um, bending upwards you just have to go r y so you can make it go all the way up to the top I guess this is, this is actually pretty good to simulate like flower, a blossoming flower. Uh, to finalize this, all we have to do now is press Shift D, create a duplicate of that, move it to a separate layer, so maybe the one next to it, or that one. Um, and then we want, we want to make this as one mesh. We don't want to let the particle take over. 
So uh, I'm going to apply the particle. So just press convert. So now uh, it separates everything in the mesh. The, but the important thing is the particle system is still active. So make sure you go to the particle settings and turn it off. Now you can go ahead and select the leaf emitter. I can select it. Yep. And then just delete it. We don't need, we don't need that anymore. Uh, and just uh, reposition everything until, uh, you know, reposition everything the way you want. So any overlaps, just manually go in and fix it. So let's go R and this one, uh, RY, RYY. If there's too much sticking on the end, then um, uh, just delete it. If there's any, any kind of grass that's sticking, like sticking way too much like that one, just delete it. But I'm not going to delete that one, maybe I'm, I'm just going to reposition that there. So yeah, just tweak it. So tweak away to your heart's desire. I might just go from the previous one and I'll just probably duplicate this one as well. So Shift D. So select this and then Shift D, move it to the second layer. So once you're happy with everything and you want to make that a plant, just box select everything. Maybe box select uh, the one of the main root ones and then press Control J to make it one mesh. And there we go. So we can very, very quickly add variations to this. Very, very quickly. All you have to do is just go back to the first layer again, select your leaf emitter, Shift D, um, move it to the second layer, uh, and then go to the second layer and then move it, say grab X like that. And then you can change the seed value, something like one, something like random, to randomize it a bit more. And once you're happy with something like that, then you, yet again, you'd go into the modifiers panel, convert it, uh, and then turn, go in the particle settings and turn off the particle. Select your leaf emitter, if I can find it. And uh, yeah, then go into this one and then tweak any mistakes here as well. Like that. And oh, R, Y, Y, that. And so on. Make sure none of them are overlapping. But in my case, I don't really care if they are overlapping because they're just going to be a prop to my... Uh, to my backyard scene but if you're gonna do a close-up render it's better that you uh you take the time and um make sure nothing's overlapping and then select all of them and then press ctrl j ah of course the leaf colors will change because now this is part of one mesh so every time i duplicate it's going to create different different uh colors of our mesh so i guess if you want to really want to go in and change everything you'd probably go to the node ed editor yet again and select the leaf and uh, you just add a cloud texture to control it. So over here, just add a uh, texture, noise texture, put that in there, uh, add a color, yeah, add a, uh, you're gonna get another hue saturation value, uh, add the factor to the hue, and um, yeah, just uh, use that to control everything. Oh, sorry, not that. Use uh, I, I obviously plug your original image in there, and use that to control uh, your color here and your color there, and that's uh, putting uh, too much uh, variation to our colors. So uh, again, we might use uh, these two guys, Shift D, and uh, plug this factor into this one, this factor into that one. And then we get that bit more, and then we get a bit more variation. It's very subtle, but it's there. And if I demonstrate it by saying 0.4, you can tell that the variation is a lot larger. So, that's a bit of a workaround, a bit of a lot of, a lot of things to learn. But um, and we have a relatively complex-looking shader setup now, but uh, it's not really that complicated. Okay, I hope uh, you guys have been able to follow this. So that's how you create little plants in Blender using a reference image. Uh, sort of close, sort of not, I guess. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I hope this video has been useful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.